Hey, good up, Tom. Good morning. Today we are going to be talking about lazy eye, and I bet it's not what you think it is. Hey, I'm Dr. Michael Nelson, the YouTube eye doctor, and today we're talking about amblyopia, or otherwise the layman's term is called lazy eye. And lazy eye is a condition where one eye does not see as well as the other. Now, a lot of people mistakenly think that lazy eye is when one eye is turned in a different direction than the other, and the eyes don't work together. And that's not actually true. That is something called strabismus or an eye turn. And it can be associated and a strabismus or an eye turn can cause a lazy eye, but lazy eye is something different. Lazy eye or amblyopia is basically a situation where the connections from the one eye to the brain haven't developed normally. And so when we are born, the connections from our eyeball to the brain are not completely developed. A lot of them are, a lot of those nerve fibers are connected from the eye to the brain, but the ones that carry the very, very detailed vision, that's your central vision, those nerve fibers haven't been developed. And the thing that causes them to develop is if you have a clear image on the back of the retina, then the brain thinks, hey, there's a clear image on the back of the retina of this child's eye. We need to make sure we grow or plug in or develop those pathways to carry that very detailed vision signal for that eye. And that's the normal case that happens in almost all of kids. However, in some kids, they'll have one eye that things are a little bit different than the other eye. And so that can be a situation where they have a stronger prescription in one eye than the other, or that they might actually have an eye turn that one eye is pointed in a different direction in the, than the other eye. And in those situations, the development or connection of those nerve fibers from the eye to the brain don't develop normally. And so let's talk about amblyopia when the prescription is stronger in one eye than the other, or sometimes this can happen when there's a strong prescription in both eyes or a lot of astigmatism in a child. And so in this situation, you'll have one eye that there's a clear image on the retina and, and the brain will detect that and it'll start growing in the nerve fibers for that eye. And the other eye, let's say it has a really strong prescription, there's not a clear image on the retina and the brain will detect that. They'll say, it's not, there's not a clear image on the back of the retina. So why, why are we to spend the time to grow in the nerve fibers for the detailed vision? Because there's not even a clear image there anyways. The brain thinks we're gonna spend time learning how to walk or how to talk or other developmental milestones rather than growing in the neural pathways for the vision in that eye that doesn't have a clear image. And so the typical situation is the child will come in for an eye exam, and this will be a first eye exam, usually around the age three or four, or maybe five or six, and the parent won't suspect any issue, and the doctor will say, hey, I think there's a problem, particularly in one eye. And a situation could be that one eye has no prescription at all, so the child sees perfectly just out of one eye with both eyes open, they don't no notice anything unusual, and the other eye has a strong prescription, and the vision is blurry. So what we need to do in those situations so the child doesn't develop amblyopia is that we need to get a prescription to put a clear image on the back of the retina. And so we'll often prescribe glasses and that'll put a clear image on the back of the retina to give those neural pathways for that amblyopic eye to develop. So often you can say, well, what's the harm if we don't do anything? Well, the connections from the eye to the brain are nervous tissues, they're nerve fibers. And we know that there's a plasticity period for development of nerve fibers. And there is some when we're adults, but it's not nearly as robust, the plasticity of the, our neural system and neural pathways as when we're a child. And so when you're a child, you have an opportunity to develop those pathways, but oftentimes if you reach adulthood, then they may not be able to develop and you might not reach good potential vision in that poor eye. And so what I will often do is I'll often have the child wear the glasses and I'll suggest that the child wear the glasses full time for about a month and then I'll have them back and I'll check the vision with the glasses on. And what I'm looking for is seeing what the best potential vision is in that eye with the stronger prescription. And if you have good vision or equal vision between the two eyes with the glasses, then that's great news. And what it means is that there's no amblyopia, the neural pathways have developed for that eye. Now, if they come back in a month and one eye sees really, really well, but that eye that we've given the prescription and they've worn them full time for about a month, and that vision is still worse than the good eye, that means that they have amblyopia and means we have to do some things to intervene to get the brain to develop those connections. The good news is there's a lot of great treatments for amblyopia, but what you need to do is you need to make sure your child gets their eye exam 
get their first eye exam by at least the age of three. Amblyopia affects about 5% of the population, so it's a really, really common issue, and it's something that you won't know unless you get an eye exam. So book that appointment with your optometrist today, and with that, have a great optometry day.